few weeks' time. Now to a story of a coincidence which took place in a Canberra park. International students in Canberra on prestigious John Dillon Fellowships discovered that the fellow they were buying coffee from at his little cart next to a bike path in O'Connor is none other than the grandson of John Dillon. It's a quirky little Canberra story from Richard Snashel. Yeah, a lot of, lot of trees. I'd like to tell you a story about why you're here. Um, Beck and a few of the rest of us in ACR ride our bicycles to work most days and we ride down this bicycle path and Patrick, yeah. Patrick over here has been selling coffee to people on the side of the bicycle path. One day he said to us, what do you do? We said, well, we work for international agricultural research. And he said, oh, you might not know this, but my grandfather used to do some work in international agricultural research, and his name's John Dillon. We went, whoa, John Dillon? And then Patrick went, whoa, you know my grandfather? <laughs> or knew my grandfather? And so we explained about the John Dillon Fellowship and said, we'll bring them down next time they come. So you can get to meet Patrick, and luckily you can also meet Mike, who is John Dillon's son. Hi. I'm Hi, Matilda. Patrick, my son, uh, runs this little coffee shop, Sly Fox, uh, on the bike path uh, north of the university here. And uh, one, uh, I think uh, the, the people from ACR have got talking to him, uh, maybe their general, usual customers or something, and eventually they made the connection with my father. He was the, uh, uh, the chair of ACR uh, for uh, an extended period uh, and, uh, and obviously had a, a big role in... Um, Australia's involvement in the SIGIA system, the uh, International Agricultural Research uh, Research System run out of the World Bank. He'd be uh, uh, certainly a presence. Uh, uh, the words I use to describe him often are idiosyncratic, uh, eccentric. Uh, he used to uh, quite often wear ponchos because he worked in South America. Uh, he wore a big straw hat. Uh, his ear uh, had been taken off for melanoma, so uh, uh, he had only one, one ear. Uh, he wore a ring he'd bought in India with these tassels on it, a silver ring, uh, like very unconventional appearance, uh, and uh, and also uh, his his uh, he was prepared to talk about uh, things in in a different sort of a way. He he came at things in a he, well, not a blunt way, but he was um, uh, forthright. And then he would come home at night and talk. Um, because because there's a big family uh, dinner yeah. table with nine children. Yeah. So, but he would talk to my mother about what happened at, at work that day, and sometimes he would tell funny stories. And uh, yeah. it was very exciting actually when we were told yesterday afternoon that we will be uh, visiting the John Dillon family. We were never been told of uh, or been informed of before we came here that we are going to meet a family. We were just been told yesterday afternoon, and it's kind of wow. We were so excited, and each one of us were asking, were we the first one, were we the first lots to meet the family of John Dillon? And they said, yes, you are the first one. And we were, wow, all of us are going, we were so excited. And these are the students from the scholarship oh, from all over the world? Oh, wow, amazing. For me personally, it's good because, um, because uh, I think I will keep in contact with um, Patrick. He's got a small coffee business, and I work for PNG Coffee. The link is there, and uh, it's very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. A pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> He makes a fair brew too. And that is our program for this week. We'll be back at the same time next week with a special...